Um, this is continuing a live stream that was cut off uh, after about two minutes. I was talking about uh, a Bloomberg documentary that I watched on super intelligence, which engaged with the idea that um, we are in the midst of an AI takeoff, a correct statement, but not recognizing that that AI takeoff is a bourgeois AI takeoff, um, largely dominated uh, by U.S. military contractors. The U.S. military industrial complex is the world's worst polluter. It's a trillion dollar a year abomination. Uh, but it's far worse than merely being the world's worst polluter uh, because its only real job on the world stage is to protect other super polluting organizations, um, corporations, or um, um, hateful entities uh, like its puppet state, uh, the client, the military client state of the United States, known as Israel, which is engaging in a, an act of extreme super pollution in the last year, in its um, um, uh, uh, carpet bombing of Gaza, and uh, general belligerence uh, uh, towards other uh, uh, parts and regions, uh, uh, thereabouts. And um, um, this, um, uh, so these people uh, who are um, in charge of AI in the West, and you know, I talk about oh, the the, the Western world. I, I don't know if I use the phrase in the uh, uh, short uh, video that got cut off, but I use this word a lot. But the, the Western world is itself a problematic designation because um, uh, European descended people um, make up less than ten percent of the world's population. They have a, a obscene, uh, outsized influence on, on world affairs and uh, um, sectors generally, and uh, the sectors uh, closer to the military industrial complexes or the operations of, um, of, of high finance or financial capital uh, concentrations generally um, um, are the ones that they are closer to. Uh, but they are not the world. Uh, they are killing the world. Uh, these um, um, less than 10% of people uh, make up about 80% of the environmental impact on this planet. So when you see um, uh, people sharing memes or casually remarking that um, uh, this, um, um, uh, this uh, planet would be better off without human beings uh, who contribute nothing to the sustainability of ecosystems or uh, things along these lines, understand that that is a fundamentally white supremacist statement right? because um, the problem is really not people. You would say the problem is European descended pigs um, and the economic system that they have forced upon the rest of the world. Um, it's accurate in my view and I don't, uh, I don't see this as a controversial statement at all except that people would tend to deny it because of their bourgeois ideological baggage. It's accurate to say that without this uh, fascist ringleader the anti-communist fascist ringleader of the United States, anti-communism and fascism are the same thing. If you are an anti-communist, you are a fascist sympathizer at best. Um, um, the, all the communist is essentially is a person uh, willing to stand up for a humane and sustainable economic system, a livable world. And uh, the fact that so relatively few people in this Western world um, are willing to do that uh, reflects uh, elitism and cruelty, uh, the bourgeois ideological filth that they've been brainwashed into accepting, um, and not any real engagement uh, of an intellectual kind, of a realistic kind, of a human kind. Um, and um, um, so these um, uh, um, small percentage of human beings, less than 10% of human beings, who uh, uh, dominate world affairs, uh, they are um, the ones who are actually uh, killing the planet and when you say um, um, we would be better off without human beings you are saying uh, you are blaming the victims uh, the other 92 percent 91 percent of human beings who have uh, relatively small um, environmental impacts who have not upheld um, uh, fascist entities and ideologies and um, um, who, who are the ones who are um, 
um, uh, taking the punishment. The people of Gaza are taking the punishment uh, for um, this uh, uh, bourgeois ideology and institution that uh, manifests itself in the form of the malign um, apartheid um, ecocidal state of Israel, uh, which is really better thought of as the 51st state of the United States, um, um, a fascist entity uh, so entwined with uh, the larger um, um, anti-communist anti ringleader of the United States as to be indistinguishable. There's no point in time in which um, if the United States had uh, withdrawn its um, uh, uh, f uh, client military client funder uh, status from Israel that they would have continued to exist in the way that they do um, and um, they should not continue to exist um, the, the, the uh, so-called Israeli people um, if they were uh, to accept uh, the leadership of the Palestinians um, many of them might uh, still be able to live peacefully that was the case uh, you see um, if you go to uh, um, a, a Twitter profile called Torah Judaism uh, you see people commenting on this uh, quite frequently uh, that before uh, the uh, form of Western fascism uh, known as Zionism uh, became a, a major player on the world stage even practically in living memory um, this person one of these people describes their parents uh, living in this um, in this world where um, where Arabs and Jews uh, living in the Levant, uh, particularly in this uh, area of uh, Palestine, uh, got along just fine uh, before the European descended pig uh, came along and twisted everybody up in service to empire, really, and financial capital. It's not about religion, but liberal says to you, oh, these people have been fighting for thousands of years. That's not even true. And uh, that person is an imperialist pretending to be something else. Um, as would be any person who says things along the lines of I support the modern state of Israel and its right to exist Israel has a right to defend itself slave owners did not have a right to defend themselves um, uh, violent settlers and occupiers um, and people holding others in concentration camp conditions as is the case um, in the years before 2023 in, in Palestine and um, and people who would uh, lead a slave revolt uh, to get out of those conditions, uh, those are people on the right side of history. And uh, the people um, um, defending that system are the people on the wrong side of history. Do not get it twisted. Um, um, and um, uh, so when you have uh, tech entities um, uh, like Google, and Facebook, and and uh, Twitter, and um, OpenAI, every major technologist that you've ever heard of in the Western world, Western world, um, is a Zionist, and when pressed, many of them would be the people who um, use that uh, 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 liberal, uh, uh, effective CIA talking point that I just described, of saying, "Well, it's Israel. I believe Israel has a right to exist." All of that bullshit. Um, but nevertheless, these are just imperialists. Uh, these are just fascists so there's no sec part of tech the people who are most responsible um, um, or very much um, in 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 uh, control of the development of this super intelligence um, who are not um, open imperialists active um, active anti-communists and fascists active oppressors you know if you're drunk uncle joe uh, says, um, I, don't, I don't like Arabs, I do, I do 72 virgins, uh, stupid things like that. You say, well, um, that's a dumb guy, my dumb uncle, um, but he's not in a position uh, uh, to change world affairs, uh, none too much. Um, but um, uh, people like the heads of OpenAI, the heads of Facebook, um, uh, the heads of Google, and really m majority of their employees um, are people in that position. If you go to work for a military contractor and you say, oh, I'm going to fix the system from within, you know that that's not true, right? You know that you're just one mook who's not going to fix anything. And what you're really saying is, I, I needed that $100,000 job uh, more than I needed to be a good person. Um, and, um, um, you know, 
I, there's people like this um, who I admire, like Tim Nickebru, who worked for Google and became a Google whistleblower, and a person who has a, as solid of an understanding of a people's AI takeoff as nearly any person who you could ever read about. Uh, most of the people, if you searching super intelligence or people who work in AI, or any, if you do a deep dive on any of that, you're going to find people who are far, far worse than Tim McEbru. But that is a person who went to work for a fascist organization, and that's a person who is uh, not, in my view, 100% um, uh, aligned uh, with the revolutionary cybernetic socialist worldview. A person who is maybe a more inclined to a left liberalism uh, than the genuine necessaries of defeating uh, the evildoers that she has criticized. Um, and um, um, this uh, uh, this Bloomberg uh, documentary uh, was worse still uh, uh, than that left liberal uh, tech criticism um, because it was disconnected uh, from this uh, reality. Um, it poses this question, will AI become autonomous and thus outside of the control of human beings? Uh, that by and large is a kind of subterfuge on the part of these fascistic crypto-fascistic technologists um, because um, uh, they know <laughs> that um, a system, um, no matter how complex it becomes, still has someone controlling. Uh, but they want to confuse that issue. Technologists, almost to a man, want to confuse that issue uh, because um, this bourgeois AI takeoff, its destructiveness, um, its being controlled by uh, ruling elites of the West and financial capital, um, that's a bad situation for human beings, uh, but if they can uh, confuse uh, what's actually going on there by saying the machine has a mind of its own over and over again, thousands and thousands of times a day, um, across various uh, ridiculous uh, um, uh, uh, podcasts and uh, seemingly journalistic efforts, um, then um, they have done the job that they are required to do of... Uh, upholding empire and um, so I'm not I, sometimes I link um, audiobooks on this channel where I say I mentioned in passing a book and then I'll link a bunch of audiobook um, uh, uh, links like the one I, I mentioned and some similar and maybe I'll do that on this as well I'm not going to link to anything from Bloomberg I would I, I would uh, I would, I would, uh, uh, I would I would sooner delete the post itself uh, then link to bourgeois garbage. If you want, really want to watch that, I'm sure you can just find a recent Bloomberg video about superintelligence. Um, but let's talk about superintelligence in the context of a people's AI takeoff and the thing that I often talk about on this show, uh, the proxy hive mind, or uh, more particularly, more succinctly described, um, a decentralized autonomous organization uh, built on uh, interconnected large uh, language models into a multi-agent system of a kind distinct from other multi-agent systems, of a kind distinct from other um, um, endeavors uh, to do with uh, artificial general intelligence or superintelligence. It's not terribly useful to talk about artificial general intelligence, in my view. It's better to talk about uh, superintelligent uh, structures. Um, there are 8.2 billion human general intelligence in, on this planet um, who are underutilized by and large people who have uh, learned helplessness or a genuine helplessness uh, to uh, changing the system. No one is genuinely helpless. We can organize in the many hundreds of millions or billions tomorrow um, uh, to stop capitalism's climate apocalypse and to defeat the forces of financial capital and empire. Um, um, these things happen have happened historically all the time, uh, where uh, suddenly a, a shift in the population uh, leads to a revolutionary outcome or revolutionary endeavor. Um, and there is no more relevant thing to say that, than this because we have five years left before we reach runaway overheating from capitalism's climate apocalypse, wherein in the decades to follow, uh, the earth will become unlivable. Uh, these psychotic financial capitalists and uh, imperialists are engaged in a project of their own de demise and your demise, um, a project of converting uh, lovely planet Earth, a place 
that can support multicellular life into a place that for all intents and purposes is more like the planet Venus that cannot support multicellular life. Uh, that's a project well underway. Every month or so I see something in the um, um, uh, Life Sciences news feed uh, uh, to do with uh, uh, some col catastrophic collapse um, of uh, uh, some section of an ecosystem. Um, uh, for example, a few months ago, um, I saw something that suggested that uh, a study, real studies, um, uh, confirmed in, in, in scientific journals, um, uh, saying that um, in the course of 2023, or the 12 months prior, uh, there were, uh, um, in the aggregate, uh, there was no conversion of CO2 to oxygen on planet Earth. Uh, that's to say the lungs of the world have collapsed in, to such a degree uh, that um, uh, no uh, new oxygen was con converted in total. Um, if that should continue for a few years, uh, you may not have breathable atmosphere, and there's no reason to assume um, that that would not uh, continue in that way uh, based on what's going on. Um, this is why I... Uh, use this kind of language of saying um, uh, uh, we have to defeat uh, this uh, um, anti-communist fascist empire, the United States, its military industrial complex, the world's worst polluter, and uh, we have to um, um, be willing also to dramatically change the way we live, aside from uh, the need to become revolutionaries. Um, uh, we have to abolish these sectors, the military industrial complexes of this uh, Western fascist world, um, but also um, uh, the uh, somewhat closely related uh, fossil fuel sectors, which if we were to abolish fossil fuels across uh, the world tomorrow, um, in total that would cause uh, supply chain collapses in, in the near term, uh, causing death of millions. Um, um, so that's not a good thing, but we could um, get rid of 97% of fossil fuel consumption um, without doing that, and that's something that, again, we could easily do just in the sense uh, that uh, human beings could come together um, in relatively short order and defeat the forces of uh, financial capital and empire if they were so inclined. It's happened many, many times. It'll be something um, uh, more like a, the Spartacus um, uh, uh, sl uh, slave uh, up uprisings that involved uh, tens of thousands of slaves. Um, uh, than, than um, uh, the kind of uh, political machinations that you're more familiar with. But nevertheless, it's happened many times in history, and it must happen again if our species is to continue to exist. Um, and um, uh, so there's no conversation about advanced computing uh, without understanding um, who the people most responsible for advanced computing generally today are, and... Uh, and the, force, and the larger forces that work in our world around this area. Um, advanced computing um, that surpasses human cognitive abilities um, is an opportunity for humankind to avoid its extinction, uh, an opportunity for humankind to make a livable world besides. There are other existential risks of a less pressing kind than uh, capitalism's climate apocalypse. There are major concerns of similar order of magnitude to do um, with um, elitism and cruelty. Um, inhumane economic system generally, problems that uh, have predated um, this ticking time bomb uh, that is capitalism's climate apocalypse. Um, and uh, we are on this razor's, razor's edge. Uh, the uh, technologist um, uh, Huckster, um, uh, Ray Kurzweil, who is a person uh, very much responsible for whitewashing the problems of financial capital and empire and talking about um, um, an AI takeoff as if it's uh, uh, possible to do that with um, it being micromanaged by financial capital and empire um, in a way that's going to help human beings and not make the problem worse. That's a lie. This is a liar, as are basically all technologists of the fascist West. Um, um, but uh, this person has, I think, quite correctly observed that we're likely to see effects from this bourgeois AI takeoff, that's making things worse, uh, but effects uh, nevertheless of a pronounced kind, different from um, institutional operations of the 20th century standard, 
around the year 2029. He thinks that, um, as many such people think, that um, uh, something like a singularity, which under this bourgeois A.T. Kopf would be a dystopian event, um, will occur around 2045. I don't disagree with either of those numbers. Um, um, but I do um, uh, believe that we must distinguish between this bourgeois uh, takeoff, which makes things worse, or it uh, builds an effective techno-fascist regime on a global scale um, that um, protects, uh, immortalizes financial capital, and um, creates a, uh, this what's been what's been called a um, um, a, a a worldwide neo-feudalist. Uh, system, even that's quite generous. So these words like um, techno-fascism and neo-feudalism, like criticisms of capitalism that fall short of calling for the ab abolition of private wealth, uh, saying, oh, the problem is not capitalism, the problem is crony capitalism, or monopoly capitalism, the problem is greed, the greed of the elites. Um, uh, that's a pretty intentional um, uh, confusing of the issue. Put placing um, uh, the problem, saying that the problem is feelings or abstractions rather than the institutions which must be demolished. Um, and uh, so when you use words like um, neo feudalism or techno feudalism, uh, you're kind of to some degree engaging with that, but it's also a way to articulate uh, quite quickly um, uh, some real phenomena. Um, uh, people say I take off, um, driven. Um, in the near term, uh, by a decentralized, collaborative, egalitarian um, uh, framework uh, at, in, of the kind that I described, um, a full automation or high automation large language model work group uh, that's able to do more with less, um, a workforce multiplier um, versus the bourgeois AI takeoff, which uh, is uh, dominated by privately held and military contractor uh, dominated development of general intelligence and what I was going to say a moment ago the general intelligence uh, conversation that focus on developing general intelligence there are 8.2 billion people on earth who are underutilized general intelligences a few more uh, that, that are effectively fascist sympathizers added to the pile who are artificial general intelligence makes a little difference uh, so the conversation is better uh, better understood when focused on uh, super intelligence and um, uh, better uh, still understood uh, when you're willing to recognize the difference between uh, this bourgeois AI takeoff, the bad thing that's happening, it's leading to a dystopian world. It's undeniable. When you look at um, uh, the United States, for example, winning the Cold War um, and the world that's uh, born from it, the neoliberal uh, world that's born from it, this doomed world uh, that's born from it. Um, um, and um, um, the people say I take off is a thing um, that could have occurred quite easily um, as I said on this uh, program many times um, in from 1971 to 1973 um, in Chile um, a technological planned economy was being built an innovation um, uh, like few others um, in, in coordination uh, with um, uh, very fine uh, Chilean and South American uh, cybernetic socialists and a pioneering cyberneticist uh, Stafford Beer and um, um, this uh, is something that I believe had it been allowed uh, to continue to exist would have had an impact on the region and the world uh, far beyond uh, the region of a kind similar to what occurred in the 1920s with the building of the first foray into state socialism, the glorious Soviet Union. Um, and um, um, this, um, um, in the eyes of the ruling elites who had managed to, um, through the machinations of things like uh, Project Mockingbird and or CIA run world generally, a CIA dominant world generally, a Western intelligence agency shenanigans having a huge impact on world affairs, uh, they were able to um, destabilize governments, something that they'd done uh, to a high degree uh, to, in the years shortly before this. Much of Southeast Asia was depopulated. Uh, in many places, 20 to 30 percent of the people were murdered by the fascist United States for the crime of wanting a humane and sustainable economic system in their fucking country. 
murdered millions of people across East Asia uh, uh, um, uh, for no reason other than this, fascism. Um, and um, um, uh, so this, um, uh, this uh, Western fascism had cemented itself in ways that it did not exist um, in the early uh, 20th century by 1973. They were also uh, having, um, at that time, uh, think tanks able to do analysis of this sort of thing in ways that uh, were not done in decades prior. Uh, so they saw the possibility of a network world. They saw the po possibility of a cybernetic socialist um, a form of state socialism uh, that would inspire the world to want to do things in a way that the Soviet Union had inspired the world, even people who were not dedicated to the abolition of private wealth, uh, to do things like build public uh, health services and uh, housing authorities and make things better for human beings, but worse for fascists, uh, for financial capital and empire. Um, and so they were able to stop that dead in its tracks. And I believe uh, that if uh, that had not occurred, that's to say if um, um, uh, Pinochet had not been installed by the fascist United States, destroying um, uh, Allende's Chile and that technological planned economy, uh, we would have seen something like AI take off effects decades before uh, this projected time of uh, uh, 2029, uh, maybe um, maybe around the year 2000, as um, uh, prognosticators had imagined uh, effects of that magnitude occurring in the decades prior. This was not something even that was uh, a terribly novel idea in 1971, uh, that something uh, like a technological transformation of planet Earth might occur around the year 2000. Um, and um, uh, people don't talk about this sort of thing as much anymore. We've, rebind, we've resigned ourselves to Mark Fisher's um, uh, un, uh, correct but uh, uh, um, uh, sad analysis of uh, capitalist realism. Uh, uh, so much so that um, Westerners um, almost to a man, or overwhelmingly anyway, are people who are not even willing to say, much less uh, fight for, um, uh, a system other than the one that they know, they literally almost all know, um, uh, is killing themselves, is killing their planet, is killing their species. Um, the People Say I Take Off is a vision of a collective empowerment um, of a different kind, uh, where um, network superintelligence um, using open source large language models at first, at least, um, in the next few years, is uh, developed and deployed in a manner that benefits humankind. This must be a dramatic effect in the next few years if we are to avoid capitalism's climate apocalypse. And uh, so um, we have to move away, unfortunately, from uh, the form uh, that I described um, cybernetic socialism um, uh, that is uh, uh, centered on state socialist actors um, to a decentralized form um, because it is sufficiently amorphous uh, to avoid uh, being destroyed uh, by the fascistic forces of this world, namely the United States. Um, and so we could build this uh, large language model proxy hive mind, as I've called it. I use this term uh, to contrast it from a true hive mind, I am a hive mind collectivist, as I have imagined that I, or aspired to be. Uh, it is an aspirational position uh, for much of my life. Um, it is aspirational because um, such form of collectivism would require a technology that is not in practice uh, today. The use of brain-computer interfaces to connect human beings um, in a more robust way than uh, they are connected by speech. Um, and such uh, pathways alone. Um, and so this technologically mediated telepathy is something uh, that could very well develop in the course of these years, 2029 to 2045. That would seem to be a feature of something like a, um, uh, AI singularity in my view. Uh, but um, many people are apprehensive about that outcome, and perhaps rightly so. Um, and um, uh, so I have uh, tried to imagine a thing, uh, the proxy hive mind, that de delivers uh, certain of the most important benefits of this uh, without dramatically transforming the human experience into something that they would find uh, fearsome. 
Um, and um, uh, so it might be better, as I said, to refer to this as a centralized autonomous organization uh, made up of open source large language uh, model um, actors um, of an agentic kind um, built into a multi-agent system of a robust and unique form uh, than to refer to a proxy hive mind uh, which references that fearsome uh, thing. Uh, but um, I do not believe uh, that we should pull punches when it comes to things like communism. A hive mind collectivist would be a form of communist, a person willing to stand up for a humane and sustainable economic system, but willing to um, make use of this uh, rather dramatically different technology to that end. So you would say, um, if you look at a political compass and you look at all the existing forms of uh, socialistic, um, uh, 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 socio-political phenomena, um, the uh, hive mind collective would be outside of the political compass. It would be above and outside of um, the political compass because it could not exist by the standards of the technology of today, or at least of recent years. Um, um, this um, um, open source uh, development of advanced computing is the most crucial part of uh, building a world where there is a people's AI takeoff rather than a bourgeois AI takeoff. And, um, and so uh, new forms of, of knowledge sharing and uh, cooperation, uh, these sound like bromides, uh, but they are uh, the uh, fundamentals of uh, such a project um, only in this world of capitalist realism is a thing like uh, taking care of other human beings and working together um, uh, something to uh, be laughed at in, in any other any other system this is an ordinary most ordinary uh, kind of thing um, and um, uh, and so this problem that's touched upon in this garbage Bloomberg documentary of um, AI alignment essentially um, is is very real uh, but it's a problem uh, that is uh, mostly um, that most of the conversations about AI alignment that you are being force fed are um, um, intentional disinformation uh, designed uh, to um, uh, exonerate uh, the forces of financial capital and empire who are the real bad actors in this problem of the AI takeoff, the bourgeois AI takeoff, um, and so confuse matters rather than fix them. Um, um, but um, the benefits of a super intelligent um, um, advanced computing uh, development um, by the people and for the people are um, would be dramatic, including in a few short years being able to not reverse but stop the effects of, uh, of uh, climate change. But that would require um, a mass of, of AI agents and their human um, uh, uh, controllers uh, uh, working uh, together to bring to heel the forces of financial capital and empire, to bring to heel those sectors um, responsible for this, uh, military industrial complex, end it, um, fossil fuels basically end it, livestock systems uh, end it, you can do all of that without harming a single human being, um, and um, uh, so this is not uh, uh, something that can really realistically be devoted to say bioremediation, um, which is what most bourgeois technologists will refer to when the subject of uh, climate change comes up. There's no technological basis for, in that five-year time frame, uh, a bioremediation uh, regimen uh, that would change this trajectory in the slightest. It, there's a basis for greenwashing that pretends to do that. Bill Gates talks about that a lot. We would can carbon capture and uh, other people of that kind of uh, uh, um, a presence uh, talk about that a lot, but these are CIA assets, for lack of a better word. All of them, every famous technologist that you ever heard of is more CIA asset than human being. And um, 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 so the, the, the hard work of uh, ending a uh, capitalist climate apocalypse by uh, changing the nature of the um, industrial outputs of these uh, so-called developed nations is the work that must be done and that's a work that uh, this thing uh, work group 
um, based on open source uh, super intelligence uh, that is a workforce multiplier that can uh, grow to, in such a way as to supplant and overpower the fascist West. Um, uh, that is the thing that they must attend uh, to uh, more than say projects of a more humanitarian kind or any such greenwashing garbage that I mentioned. Um, uh, the the um, the the this um, um, decentralized autonomous organization built on open source large language models into a novel multi-agent system of a strength that could overpower uh, the forces of uh, uh, empire and financial capital. Um, it is a path uh, to this thing that I've referred to as a people say I take off. Uh, we are not on that path at present. We need to get on that path that requires that hundreds of thousands and ultimately millions of people uh, work in this way. So would download, um, for example, download um, a modified uh, large language model to their computers, uh, leave it on, and then interact with it, perhaps with just a few yes or no emails in the course of a day or a few shorter emails in the course of a week. But they would nevertheless be steering a super intelligent force at that time if it grew to hundreds of thousands or millions of users. Um, and um, so that's relatively little work. I refer to this as a sleeping beauty phenomenon. You can become the most important revolutionary in history and nevertheless never uh, take off your pajamas, um, never really get out of bed um, uh, because of this uh, sleeping beauty phenomenon where uh, this agentic mass is really doing most of the intellectual labor, not just in this context, but ultimately of our world, by transforming the industrial base um, and growing to millions of users, it would become the effective superstructure of our world. That's why I, can, uh, I think correctly describe this as supplanting uh, these other f uh, f uh, dominant forces of empire and financial capitalism. Um, and this is so with the benefits of a people's super intelligence uh, can then be distributed around the world. This is effective achievement in a decade um, if properly unrolled, of full communism, full techno-communism in our time. Um, and um, there are uh, considerations. How does this operate within um, less malign institutions uh, than the fascist United States, which must be disbanded? Um, and how does this, um, uh, how do we maintain uh, governance um, uh, of this? This is essentially a governance structure of a rep very representative kind. Uh, so um, by and large, people who are uh, pretending uh, that, that superintelligence generally is not to be controlled, they're really talking in a roundabout way about how they don't trust other uh, capitalists, themselves being fascistic capitalist sympathizers, uh, but they don't trust other capitalists, but they can't say that because they get fired from their shitty jobs at Bloomberg and such. Uh, so they just talk about this as an alien force. Um, um, but, um, um, but nevertheless, uh, the, the, the genuine issues of authority and control within these systems would be an ongoing and very pressing concern. Um, but, um, the way that people, uh, frame these problems generally is just less than useful. Um, the choice between a people's AI takeoff and a bourgeois AI takeoff is the most critical choice of the 21st century, one that will not merely shape the future of humanity, um, but is a key, key area, in my view, of avoiding capitalism's climate apocalypse and thus the full extinction or near total extinction of humankind. And so by embracing this thing that I've called the proxy hive mind, that's open source large language model work group that grows to great scale, and prioritizing uh, this decentralized governance as um, a, as a practical undertaking, um, <clears throat> and um, and the the public benefit, the building of a humane and sustainable world, which cannot be built without a humane and sustainable economic system. We can build a future where advanced computing is ultimately able to create uh, this thing that has merely been dreamed of in decades past. Um, uh, this um, uh, full uh, uh, communist outcome uh, beyond that of the effects of state socialism, uh, beyond that of, um, uh, well beyond that of the effects of the, this bourgeois AI takeoff, this uh, false thing that will only accelerate 
the death of many billions, if not all, of humankind.